One of the cool things about being back for We Are Weekend is interacting with folks from different classes, from different walks of life, from different generations. And it's just awesome to hear their stories as far as their experiences when they were here on campus. I had a chance to actually go and, and tour Beaver Stadium. I had a chance to go to WPSU and see how they go about their daily activities to get folks involved in their, in their operations. Penn State is really a pivotal place for, for both my wife and I. We met here. Um, I feel like I grew up at Penn State. Uh, it just broadened my horizons, both academically and also as a person. And being involved with different activities on campus really molded me into the person that I am today. We have uh, five kids. So for us, uh, trying to get away and do something just the two of us is, is really tough. So it's really great that we can have our kids with us and participate. They've had a great time participating in the different tours and activities, enjoying some of the food. And uh, having them here as part of our family has really been able to allow us to enjoy the weekend, not just my wife and I, but our entire family together. Being a pioneer is, is really special because it was, it was like getting an award and the award was just for being 50 years a graduate. But uh, actually tonight I get to put the medals on some of the new pioneers and it's passing the, the, the torch. And that's very special and we, we are weekend allows me to do that for them and hopefully they'll get enough out of we are weekend that they'll come back and, and do the same thing in the future years. We thought it'd be really cool to bring alumni tour guides back to give tours with current students and really get that alumni and also current student perspective to be able to share all of our stories. And for us on the tours, it's been really fun because we're also hearing stories from other Penn State alumni. Even if they weren't tour guides, they have their own sort of understanding of campus and little stories from different areas. So for me, it's been just so great, that synergy of sort of stories and everyone sort of having their love for Penn State and being able to share that. For me, coming back to Penn State is so much about uh, reliving old traditions, but also creating new ones. And I really thought coming back for We Are Weekend would be a great opportunity to start a new tradition at Penn State. We are. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I want to thank you for joining us here today for this special segment of We Are Weekend um, about alumni fighting childhood cancer. My name is Will Vincent. I am the Director of Alumni Engagement for THON 2022. And I'm gonna go ahead and, there you go. Gonna go ahead and share a little bit about um, what THON does, just speak on behalf of, of all of our efforts, all of our missions, and what we do as an organization. Uh, we work very closely with the Four Diamonds and the Dance Marathon Alumni Interest Group, also known as DMAG. And I'm happy to be presenting with speakers here who are going to fill you in about all those great groups. And I'm just gonna start off, like I said, with a little bit about what THON is in general, and then I'm gonna dive into some more of the specifics about the Alumni Engagement Committee, which I oversee. So I wanna start off here today with THON's mission, and I invite you to read through the mission as I talk. You'll see that our mission has three main priorities, providing emotional and financial support, spreading awareness, and ensuring funding for critical research. During each meeting, whether it be for directors, captains, committee members, we always read through the mission to have it serve as a constant reminder of our overall goal and why we do what we do every single day. This mission is such a powerful testament to the efforts of thousands and thousands of volunteers, both in State College now and those who have come before us, who are united on a journey that is so much bigger than any one of us by ourselves. As you'll see a little bit later in this presentation, not only are we continuing to secure funding for this research and for the families, but we are also trying to make sure that our mission spreads so every time that an alum discusses THON with someone, whether it's a neighbor, a coworker, a friend, that helps spread our mission. When someone likes a social media post and reposts it, our mission spreads. And when alumni participate in campaigns and other fundraisers, our mission also spreads. And you'll notice that the mission ends with our final goal, our overarching goal, which is a cure. And everything that we do as THON volunteers, we do in pursuit of this cure. And until the day that the cure has been found and we no longer need to do so, we will hold our dance marathon every year um, in February. So just wanted to share a few quick numbers about what THON really looks like here at Penn State. On campus, there's over 16,500 student volunteers who are involved in furthering THON's mission and getting involved with everything that we do. Students can be involved as committee members, as captains, as members of the executive committee in various types of orgs, special interest orgs and general orgs 
through Greek life, through a variety of clubs on campus as independent dancers who might be dancing not directly related with an org by themselves. Um, there's just so many opportunities to get involved and every year thousands of students are drawn to these opportunities. We have, as I mentioned, three, over 300 orgs. And I know I talked about a couple of them, but they take a variety of different forms. Um, Greek life is very involved in orgs. There's also special interest orgs who their really sole existence is to fundraise and to promote THON, club sports, academic clubs. It spans all corners of, of University Park and to our Commonwealth campuses. And THON has continued to grow and we hope it will continue to grow even in the future. Um, but it really does cover so, so many organizations and clubs here on campus. We have over 25,000 passionate alumni who help support our efforts after they themselves have graduated through monetary donations, spreading awareness and supporting our efforts. Uh, we really do owe so much of what we're able to accomplish and what we're able to do as an organization to the support of our amazing alumni. Um, THON has ensured that 4,000 families have never seen a medical bill for their child's treatment. So a cancer diagnosis is obviously such unbearable news, um, but THON and Four Diamonds are there to make sure that these families will never have to worry about the cost of a treatment or any side, the, any of the financial sides of anything that will come along with that. So that way the families can devote their whole efforts into their child and focusing on their child getting well, instead of worrying about whether or not they can afford a treatment or a medication, even something like paying for gas to, to get to the hospital, all of that will be and will continue to be covered through this, this monetary support. And finally, since our pairing in 1977, our pairing being THON with Four Diamonds, uh, we have been able to provide over $190 million in monetary support. If you have not read the story about the Four Diamonds and how that came to be, I would highly encourage you to do so. It is truly a powerful story that has inspired so many thousands of volunteers here at Penn State. So I would recommend a quick Google search of, of the Four Diamonds story here at Penn State THON. Um, I, would, I would highly recommend reading through that if you haven't already. And here I'm just sharing a few of what we call impact numbers. They kind of put more of a, a tangible um, perspective into what the numbers do that we, the monetary amounts that we raise. It's obviously very true that every single donation makes a difference. Um, and these are by no means the sole picture of what a cancer treatment uh, process looks like. These are just a few examples. Um, but you can see that these are real treatments and they really do support and aid in the battle. Every single donation makes a difference in the life of a child who faces cancer, whether it's through supporting a psychotherapy or funding research, anything in between. Um, I think that these numbers, which are just a few that I picked of the many, just kind of put into perspective uh, where our money goes. And next up here, I wanted to share a picture of THON Weekend 2020. I think when a lot of people think of THON, an image like this is what comes to their mind. And I'll admit when I started at Penn State, this is really what I thought of THON. It's this big reveal at the end of a February weekend that shows how much money we raised to benefit the Four Diamonds. And this is something that I think is fantastic and it's obviously such a spectacular picture, but I think that the more I've become involved in THON and the more years I've spent here, the more I've come to appreciate truly the scope of, of this organization and how it really does change the lives of others. It really is a year long effort committed to not only raising money, but to supporting our families and spreading the mission and in the fight against childhood cancer. And this, is, this picture here is really just a very, very small glimpse into what THON really is, a full-fledged year-long effort committed to, to battling childhood cancer. And I think this picture does speak volumes about the efforts of so many volunteers, but it really fails to highlight some of the most impactful parts of THON. So up next, I wanted to share with you all a quick family story. I was able to catch up with Crystal and Luis earlier this week. Unfortunately, we're not able to be here today but they were able to tell me a little bit about their THON experience um, and I'll let them kind of explain their relationship with THON, but I'm going to go ahead and share that right now. Um, hi, my name is Crystal Munoz. This is my husband, Luis Munoz. Um, I'm a, a former Four Diamonds uh, patient, um, now adult and mother, um, and Luis is a former um, Penn State student, so he's an alumni. Can you share a little bit about uh, what THON has meant to you and your family during your time with Four Diamonds? Um, so my um, my feelings on the Four Diamonds have definitely changed over the years. You know, as I was 11 when I got sick and battled till I was 14. Um, so back then, you know, you're very grateful, but you're still 
a child, so you don't fully understand the impact that the Four Diamonds Fund had on my family at the time. My mom was a single mother, so, you know, like, the, the support, both the financial and emotional support that she got, that I got, you didn't understand it then. Um, you know, as, as years have passed, as my treatment went on, you know, the longer it's been, the more I understand fully what the Four Diamonds means, you know, not just paying that 20% that her insurance didn't cover or, you know, helping with our electric bill one time or the music therapy at the, at the hospital, um, all things that I definitely loved and benefited from and definitely helped on, on my journey. But I think that the, uh, what it meant has just changed over the years. So not including Thon Weekend, do you have a favorite pre-Thon event that goes on throughout the year? Hmm. Um, uh, yes, I would say that my favorite pre-Thon event would probably be Family Carnival. I just think it's fun. Like, your organization members can come, captains are there, you know, if you have a pen pal, which we love the pen pal program, that's there. Fort Diamonds families are there. Hershey staff comes. You know, it's kind of like a mini fun weekend, but smaller. So it's like a big family reunion. Um, but you don't get lost in the DJC. So I would say definitely family carnival. <laughs> and then just in general, including Thon weekend, not Thon weekend, anything in between. Do you have a favorite Thon memory that you would like to share with us? Whew. So I've been doing thon since 1996. So that's that. That's a that's a lot of memories to have to go back on. I would say I probably have three. Um, thon 1999 when the when the um when thon moved from the white building to rec hall. I was pretty close to the overall chair um, that year. Overall director now <laughs> for these current terms. Um, they and he. I was just so excited. It was my first full year off chemo, you know, a new location, so close, knit me lying in. Um, you know, I was 15 at the time, so, like, you know, it's better than Christmas morning when you go to Thong Weekend. So I couldn't sleep the night before, so I wrote a poem. And I passed him in the human tunnel going into Red Call for the first ever time. And I just handed him the letter. Didn't think he'd read it because who has time to read that before, you know, Thon starts, and then he got up um, to start Thon Weekend, and he read that poem, and that's what opened the first ever Thon at Rec Hall, so I think that's pretty pretty amazing. Um, and then I would say the first ever Thon that I brought my oldest to, um, where she could walk, which would have been the first year at the BJC, 2007. I'm really dating myself here. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but... Uh, it was just amazing to see her like on the floor walking around interacting with dancers and seeing Thon in a whole new light as a mother so I would say that those two are probably my two best memories you said you had three did I say I had three? yeah you only gave them two well I'm probably gonna love you but no, I'm just kidding <laughs> um so I would also say that probably the, the last I would say probably last full Thon weekend not this year but um the thon 2019 yeah no 2020 2020, thon 2020. Yeah, it was, it was um you know our dancers were amazing all like we have five kids they were all there we were there um we have our organization has a newer family who's going through chemo so i just think that that like that full we had um a new org that year as well so like that full family um f feeling again was there and i I love that part of it. So again, it's like a family reunion um, and definitely one of our favorite weekends. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you all. Thank you both so much for, for joining us tonight and for sharing that with us. We really appreciate it. Awesome. And again, a big thanks to Crystal and Louise for sharing that with us. Um, and I'm going to head back to my, okay. Awesome. So I wanted to move on here and take the opportunity to talk a little bit about some of the pre-thon events. So these are events that go on before the big thon weekend. Um, and you might have heard Crystal talk about Family Carnival, and that is one of the events that I will highlight. But I wanted to start here with Harvest Day. So Harvest Day is a day for thon volunteers to spend time with 
four diamonds families at a farm in Hershey. It's usually a day in the last week or two of September. It's filled with games, a hayride, a corn maze, lots of face painting, and just a bunch of other fun events. It's one of the earlier events in the fall semester, and it gives Don volunteers the chance to spend time with kids and the families. And these are the people that really do drive our mission. And not only is it just such a fun day, um, but it really helps our volunteers see their hard work paying off with the smiles of all the kids. Next event I want to talk about a little bit is the Thon 5K. This is an annual event run in State College, and it's not really just a run. It is really a time for families to come to State College, play games, another chance to spend time with volunteers, share their stories. There's lots of great music. It's, it's really a great day. Um, the day is a celebration of not only the strength and resilience of our families and their children, um, but it's also a demonstration of our hope and our excitement for the rest of the year and for thons to come. We recognize that going to State College on an October Sunday can be difficult for a lot of people. And we now have the opportunity for anyone to run the 5K virtually. We invite those who are interested to form a team of passionate thon supporters to run the 5K that weekend at your own pace, in your own place, wherever you might be, you're able to run that. And those are details that uh, if, it's, if you're interested, we can definitely discuss a little bit later, um, but just wanted to, to let everyone know that the option does exist. Moving forward, uh, another big pre-thon event is called the Dream Forward Campaign. This is an awareness campaign in the fall semester that attempts to raise a certain monetary amount in a set period of time. Last year, we raised $690,000 in over a 13-day span. And this period features so many great efforts, not only to raise money, but like I said, really raise, raise some awareness too and promote Thon's year-long efforts. Last year, despite everything being virtually, we were able to put together art classes, fitness classes, a trivia night, all handled virtually and within guidelines, social media pushes, and so much more. So we were able to put together a fantastic two-week span to not only raise money, but also spread awareness. It's a very exciting time in Thon year. It features, features a lot of amazing events. And it is an amazing, amazing push in just a couple months before Thon Weekend really kicks off. And then finally, as I mentioned before, the Family Carnival. The Family Carnival is an event held typically in the beginning of December that gives Thon volunteers the opportunity to interact with Four Diamonds children and families before Thon Weekend. It's also like Crystal mentioned, like almost like a brief sneak peek into the energy and excitement of Thon Weekend without you know, being lost in the Bryce Jordan Center. It is filled with games, arts and crafts, face painting, karaoke, so many other amazing activities. It's just another chance for our volunteers and our families to spend time with each other. Um, and there's so much enjoyment, so much excitement there. It's, it's really a fantastic day. Um, and we're definitely one of, of the premier events during uh, the pre-thon weekend period. So next up, I want to take uh, just a minute and share a quick clip from the Thon 2021 recap video. This year obviously looked a lot different. And for those of you who don't know, we still had dancers and supporters and Thon Weekend still happened. It just looked very different. We were obviously making sure to stay within guidelines, everything that was required for us to abide by. Um, we had a live stream going throughout the duration of the weekend to give dancers and families the opportunity to be engaged, to watch performances, et cetera. However, the live stream was static from midnight until 6 a.m. just so dancers had the opportunity to rest. We really encouraged that because without being in the BJC with the typical support, it was going to be um, a little bit harder for dancers this year. So we recommended that they take the opportunity to rest, but also during the day still appreciate what they were doing and realize that you know, dancing through a pandemic was something that just hadn't been done before, but was so spectacular. So I did want to share this very briefly. Fawn is not a person or a place, but a feeling of home. Thon allows kids to be kids.
Awesome. Fun. So I know videos over Zoom can be a little bit choppy, um, but I hope everyone enjoyed that. If you want to watch the full video, watch it again. We do have it up on Thon.org. It's on our YouTube channel. Um, it's on our various social media platforms. It's There's a lot of different ways that you can watch that video, and I really encourage you to check it out because it was pretty cool. So moving right ahead, I'm going to transition into a little bit more of the alumni engagement specific topics. Alumni engagement is one of Thon's committees led by the alumni engagement director. The AE committee is made up of 14 captains who take on different roles to help fundraise and spread Thon's mission by providing resources and advice on how to do so. AE will also have around 60 committee members that we picked in the fall who will help to carry out tasks along with captains who will make sure that communicating among Thon alumni is clear and efficient. And this is the alumni engagement committee so far. This was in the spring. We have seven captains here. And then I am also a part of that committee. So I just wanted to highlight a big initiative that was taken on last year by the Alumni Engagement Committee, which was called the Alumni Reunion Series. And this was a brand new project that allowed alumni to share their THON memories. We divided THON's history into four different periods and had previous dancers, previous executive board members, and other volunteers who devoted countless hours to this organization talk about their time as a volunteer. This project was very well received in the THON community and among the four episodes that combined for over 28,000 views. Um, we also had families share their stories and talk about how impactful Thon has been in their lives, both with financial and emotional support. If you're interested, I encourage you to check out these videos. They're on Thon's Facebook page and you're able to watch them. They aired in the couple weeks leading up to Thon 2021. So it was the last couple weeks of January going into February. Um, I really enjoyed watching all of them. It's a great way to learn about Thon's history, hear about how the dance marathon has developed into what it is today and listen to alumni from the past five decades discuss um, what they really loved most about their THON journey. This year, the Alumni Engagement Committee will be carrying out a similar project that will give the chance for alumni to speak about their involvement and share their memories. Stay tuned for further announcements as the year goes on, as this event really um, starts to be developed. This past year on February 11th, we also had an alumni matching day, and this coincided with the fourth and final episode of the reunion series that I just mentioned. Thanks to two generous donors, we were able to match every fourth donation during the day. And we were able to match every single donation during that episode uh, until funds ran out. And during the day, we wanted to emphasize participation from a variety of classes. It wasn't, obviously we wanted to make sure um, that, that the monetary goals were met, but we really wanted to emphasize spreading awareness, spreading our mission and seeing how many graduating classes we could get to participate. After the day was done, we'd received donations from 64 out of the last 65 graduating classes which that statistic alone I think was amazing. This was a fantastic accomplishment. It really blew any of our expectations out of the water. I think it just goes to show how active and passionate our alumni are. So I thought that was very, very cool to share. Although this day fails to even begin to show the dedication and efforts of our alumni throughout the year, I just wanted to highlight it. Uh, in, in one day on a Thursday in February, almost every single graduating class dating back to 1956 was represented. And then this coming year, very similar to reunion series, another alumni matching day will be carried out. So as we get closer to Thon Weekend 2022, I encourage you to just keep an eye out for that. That'll be another day that we will make sure to uh, have this year. Next up, I wanted to highlight the Send It Forward campaign. So the Send It Forward campaign is special in that it works not only to spread Thon's mission, but it also does that while allowing people to fundraise for Thon. So throughout this campaign, alumni can request a certain amount of Thon envelopes, which are the envelopes that we send out and the alumni engagement committee then provides the thon envelopes to the person who requested them. And then we encourage this alum to send it forward by sending these envelopes to friends, family, coworkers, anyone who they think would be interested in hearing about thon and maybe considering making a donation. Each thon envelope is also sent with a brief family story and a few inserts about what thon is and what we do so that anyone who's receiving these thon envelopes, they don't have to be a Penn State alum. Um, they get to read a little bit about what all we do here in University Park. And it's, it's a great way to help the mission to spread and alums aren't, they're not necessarily involved with the monetary side of this, but they're able to help spread Thon's mission and it, it really helps us grow as a marathon. Next up is the alumni challenge. This is a geographically based campaign and it shows where we are receiving our donations from. So obviously, as you can see, this is a screenshot straight from our website. The Northeast region and the East Coast are, are very strongly represented, but it's so amazing to see that this visual shows that Thon truly has reached the four corners of this country. Every year we add more and more ribbons to this map and it continues to fill up. 
and it just really represents how Thon's mission is continuing to spread. Each year, we invite alumni to accept the alumni challenge and join thousands of volunteers to continue in the fight against childhood cancer. So if you are able to make a donation to Thon, you can select to make sure it is a part of the alumni challenge if it's donated online. And then a ribbon will be placed wherever the donation was received one from, which is pretty awesome. And Thon's mission, even though this map only shows the United States, it's by no means limited to the hills of Happy Valley, um, Pennsylvania, or even the United States. On the Alumni Challenge map, we have donations from Guatemala, England, and Germany. Next up, I wanted to share a little bit about Thon Nation. So Thon Nation is a countrywide effort that allows alumni, parents, and other supporters to fundraise on behalf of Thon. Anybody who's not currently enrolled at Penn State is able to participate via Thon Nation. So the opportunities are really endless. While alumni groups and other uh, group campaigns are popular, individuals are also able to fundraise by themselves. So you can make a group campaign, you can fundraise with a team, you can also fundraise by yourself. In addition, Four Diamonds families are also able to fundraise with, uh, through Thon Nation. And it's relatively new, it's only a few years old, but it is growing every single year. We've seen immense growth here and we hope to continue to see that. We have a team of four captains who spearhead all the behind the scenes of helping with fundraisers from the approval process to answering any questions, to helping make sure that the event comes to fruition. Not only do these Thon Nation fundraisers raise money for Thon and Four Diamonds, but these events are also a great way to spread Thon's mission. And as I've hit on multiple times, spreading Thon's mission is another huge part of the alumni engagement committee. So we really love these events. Not only do they bring in monetary support, but spreading Thon's mission, making sure that people are educated about what we're trying to do here. This past year, especially, I can say that we saw some unimaginable creative creativity and perseverance from the Thon Nation community. Obviously hosting fundraisers in person was not really an option um, for a lot of people. So we saw a lot of people getting very creative with what they wanted to do and were cautiously optimistic that these events, while whether or not they'll be able to turn into person, that people will continue to have that same level of creativity and passion when, when fundraising for Thon Nation. And all of the Thon Nation requests and everything is handled online at thon.org. Um, and you can reach out, so, uh, submit a request to host a fundraiser, and like I mentioned, there will be captains who will walk you through the rest of the process. So it might sound like a daunting task at, be at the beginning to host a fundraiser. Um, we have all the resources and the people to help you uh, to make that come about. And finally, I wanted to take the opportunity to talk a little bit about the alumni communications team. So the alumni communications team is a group of captains who are focused on educating and informing the Thon community about our mission, our year-long fundraising, and all of our awareness campaigns. These captains take on so many different projects, um, monthly newsletters, working with academic colleges at Penn State, graduating senior retention, just a little bit into the scope of what the alumni communications team handles. The alumni communications team is also expanding efforts. We wanna make sure that we're effectively communicating Thon not only to our alums and to the staff here at Penn State. We also wanna make sure we're keeping the parents of Thon's uh, volunteers updated. And that is something that we've been increasingly engaged with recently. We want to make sure that people's parents know how they're volunteering and what they're really doing here at Penn State. Um, so there's two monthly newsletters shown here. There's the alumni newsletter, which will be sent out on the first of every month, and the Friends of Thon newsletter, which is sent around the 15th, near the middle of every month. While the alumni newsletter is designed and tailored towards alumni, the Friends of Thon newsletter has become really our parent-focused newsletter. So this year, we're actually going to be renaming the Friends of Thon newsletter into the parents' newsletter. It's the same newsletter. It's tailored towards the parents of volunteers, like I mentioned. The, if you're interested in receiving the alumni newsletter or you just want to hear a little bit more about what all it entails, the first edition will actually be coming out July 1st. We're working on putting that together. It'll be a little bit of an introduction to the Thon year, um, kind of an introduction to all the committees and how to get involved with Thon, even though it might seem like Thon weekend is pretty far away. Um, July is when our fundraising really starts to pick up. So that's why we're sending out that first edition of the alumni newsletter on July 1st. You can sign up on thon.org slash alumni. I also have a QR code on the next screen that will allow you to sign up if you're interested. Uh, the parents newsletter itself will not be coming out until October after all our committee members are picked, but that is just something that is in the works that will be another great resource to look forward to coming in the fall. So here's the QR code. I just wanna leave this up um, for just a couple of seconds. If you're interested in signing up for the alumni newsletter, it's free. You just put in your email and you'll receive the newsletter once a month. Um, like I mentioned, if you're not interested now, if you wanna hear a little bit more about it, anything like that, you're also able to sign up at any time on thon.org. Um, so I just wanna leave that up just for a few seconds, let people scan it if they're interested. 
and I'll just go ahead and move on. Um, but I wanted to wrap everything up here with just kind of like a, a what can you do today after this presentation? Um, so I wanted to let you know that the THON 2022 alumni guide is in the process of being updated and should be done in the next day or two. That will be a great resource that will be coming out in the alumni newsletter on July 1st. It basically recaps everything I talked about today with some additional initiatives that are added in there. It's it basically a one-stop shop for everything that alumni engagement handles. So any initiatives, any campaigns that you think you would be involved in, if anything seemed to kind of uh, seemed interesting to you today, it would all be covered in the alumni guide. So that's a great resource to keep your eyes out for in the next couple of days. Um, I also encourage you to check out thon.org, explore the website. Also thon.org slash alumni, that's the alumni page. You can navigate there. Thon Nation's on there. All the alumni campaigns and alumni communications is on there. That's how you can register for the newsletter. And there's also just additional information about how to stay involved with Thon after graduation. And finally, if you have any questions, comments, anything, that's my email right there, alumni.engagement at thon.org. I am more than happy to have anyone reach out with any questions, email me directly. Um, if you have any concerns at all, uh, send those over to me and I would be happy to help you out. Finally, I just wanna thank you all for your attention here today. And I hope that you learned a little bit about Thon. If you didn't know a whole lot, I hope you learned a lot about Thon. Um, I'm now going to hand it off to the Dance Marathon Alumni Interest Group or DMAG, and they're gonna fill you in a little bit about what they do for Thon and for the Four Diamonds throughout the year. Thanks, Will. Um, just a quick note, uh, as a reminder, you can use the Q&A box um, to ask any questions about Thon. DMAIG uh, and Four Diamonds, and we'll get to those. And also, uh, we want to hear about your favorite Thon memories. Uh, so pop those in there too. And, and our moderator, uh, Kate, is going to um, mention a couple of those, hopefully. So uh, my name is Maddie Pryor, and I am the Vice President of DMAIG. I'm a 2013 alumna, and I've been on the board for, let's say, seven years now. <laughs> um, and presenting with me today is Haley, who I'll let introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Haley Staub and I graduated from Penn State in 2018 and I have been on the DMAG board for three years serving as the public relations director. Great, so I will get this going. Um, so yeah, uh, just want to mention Haley's awesome. She does all of our social media uh, and uh, which will have our handles later on, but um, she does an incredible job. So you'll want to follow us for all of that, but anyway. Um, we're here today to talk to you about how to get involved and stay involved as a Penn State graduate um, with Thon. So um, while our, our mission statement is on the screen, you know, one thing I want to mention is Thon does not end once you, you know, you cross that stage of graduation, whether in person or on Zoom or at the stadium, wherever you, you get to graduate from. Um, you know, even if you weren't involved as a student with Thon, um, you know, those four years are really just the beginning. Um, so, you know, as the Dance Marathon Alumni Interest Group, we really want to keep folks from any age, any stage of your life involved with THON and involved in the fight against uh, childhood cancer. So here are just a couple of the things we do um, with support from the Alumni Association, Four Diamonds, THON, Will, Kate. Um, so the, earlier this year, we were incredibly excited to announce a brand new endowment. Um, again, thanks to support from the Alumni Association, which is really um, helping to fund THON alumni engagement projects for, for years to come. So I know Will and his team are already thinking about um, how they can use that funding in the future. Uh, we also are, have an annual fundraiser called Hope from Coast to Coast, which we'll go over a little bit more in detail later on. Uh, we have the Rick Funk Scholarship, which um, is awarded to a student annually, to a, um, a THON volunteer student annually. Uh, we obviously support Will and Kate and, and the THON volunteers. We support regional alumni events. And we have a lot of fun stuff that goes on during THON weekend. Uh, again, a little more uh, we'll get into later, but we really encourage you to read about our endowment. You can see Haley and myself right there in that picture with alongside Paul. Um, so uh, yeah, so I'll hand it over to Haley. Thanks, Maddie. So just to give you an idea of the makeup of the Dance Marathon Alumni Interest Group Board of Directors, there are 15 alumni directors in their respective areas. So for example, vice president, public relations, treasurer, development, and et cetera. There's also two student directors each year. This year um, being Will and Kate it is the Thon Executive Director and Thon Alumni Engagement Director serve on the DMAG board, as well as co-founders who were 
essential in creating what DMAG was and we continue to engage them um, for that historical perspective. There are also other ways to get involved with DMAG beyond a formal board position and especially positions that might be interested might be interesting for those who are friends of Penn State who are partners and maybe not aren't alumni. And those are chair positions, um, which are available underneath some of the board positions. So working um, in the sense on a committee. So for example, being a public relations chair and working with me on specific public relations initiatives. And then we also have the DMAG advocates. And this advocate network is really a group of alumni, friends, partners who are working with the board to spread awareness for DMAG and Don's efforts and garner that support in their local communities. So this is an opportunity as with all of those in DMAG, but that you can really be geographically dispersed anywhere in the world and continue to give back to Thon and Four Diamonds. And then we also have gen general members, um, which have stay in the know um, with what's going on in the alumni and Thon community, but do not have specific responsibilities. So getting into how to get involved. First is donating financially. And that can be done in the various different avenues. The first being direct donations to DMAG. We, DMAG gives an annual donation then to THON um, during THON weekend. And then there's also the opportunity to do corporate matching through your company that you might work for, as well as Amazon Smile, which is a very easy way to credit THON through your Amazon purchases. And all that you have to do is use the smile.amazon URL instead of going to the regular simple amazon.com URL. And a portion of each of your purchases will go back to THON through DMAG. And we donate 100% of the proceeds that we get DMAG um, to THON through Amazon Smile. Additionally, as Maddie mentioned, the endowment that we created that is going to be existing in perpetuity. And we have put in the starter funds for that endowment, but we hope to be able to continue to grow what that is able to, the funds that that's able to generate for THON and the Alumni Engagement Committee to be able to try and in, use innovative ways to engage alumni going forward. Additionally, there's the opportunities to support the Rick Funk Scholarship this was established in 1996 to honor the longtime Thon advisor at the time, Rick Funk, and it's given every year and provides financial support to an exceptional Thon volunteer. And then we also have typically two um, merchandise sales throughout the year, and there will be one coming up in the fall, and then typically with our annual fundraiser, Hope from Coast to Coast. And I want to mention, I made this PowerPoint, so Haley didn't put a picture of herself. <laughs> So that's funny. She just, just really told me to talk about this one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Amazon Prime Day is coming up this Monday and Tuesday. They're doing two days. So it's a big time to use your Amazon Smiles account to feed your shopping addiction uh, like I do. So another way to get, <laughs> to get involved is to donate your time. And the first like big one that a lot of people don't know is you can dance as a Penn State alum. Uh, it's so, it's so exciting when, when people first find that out. I remember I, that was the first thing I found out when I graduated and I was like, let me try this out. And, uh, you can, you can do it as a recent grad. We've had people do it to celebrate their 40th birthdays. Any, like I said earlier, any age, any stage of your life, you can dance as an alum. And the way it works is, um, you know, you fundraise throughout the year and the top two or four, depending on the year, um, fundraisers get to dance. So, and if you don't have like a, a dancing partner, we can pair you up with another person who doesn't have a dancing partner. You can do it as a couple. Um, and so that's one really exciting way that you can get involved. And then this year, we, because of the nature of how Thon operated this year, is we did our first ever dancer relay. So folks from around the globe picked like an, a one hour time slot to dance during Thon weekend as an alum. So we were just like showing them dancing on our social media and that kind of stuff. And I think that's something we're going to continue just because it's so fun and different. And, you know, not everyone has the time uh not everyone like myself included is in shape enough to dance for 46 hours as an alum um, so that's another fun way to get involved um 
Another way to donate your time is, is as Haley mentioned, is becoming a DMAIG advocate. Um, we have this incredible network of folks who, uh, you know, maybe you don't have enough time to, let's say, dedicate to being on the board, but, you know, you want to be able to do like individual fundraisers and things of that nature. Um, just this, the current, the current slate of advocates we have are just so awesome. Um, and, and they're so passionate and dedicated. It's, it's really great. And lastly, this is really big, particularly for alumni chapters is hosting and attending fundraising events. You know, now that things are opening up, you know, we hope folks that um, have the means are starting to think about, you know, your game day fundraisers and your happy hours and your quiz nights and things like that, um, that you can um, fundraise for. And lastly, uh, you can donate services. So whether that's through business contacts you might have, maybe you own a business yourself, um, you know, those in-kind donations are really, really helpful both to DMA and GN Fon. For instance, um, you know, there's Operation Kids, um, which is uh, through Thon, you can visit that page and basically pick what items to uh, donate back. And it, it really helps to keep costs, internal costs down for Thon so that it, they can donate every 90 cent, 91 cents on the dollar back to Four Diamonds. Um, other things, other examples are, uh, we've had a hotel block, um, I think of the days in State College for Thon Weekend. Um, this was a, an older picture um, from a past uh, Thon Weekend reception at the Hints. Um, so, you know, we've had the Alumni Association help us out. We've had local businesses help us out with food and drink, um, anything like that, again, just to help keep internal costs down um, while being able to host events like this. So why get involved as alumni? Um, regardless of whether you participated at the Hub or in the White Building or the BJC or even at home, um, this past year, Thon has been an integral Penn State tradition that really inspires the philanthropic passion within us. And DMAG is just one of those outlets that is out there that you're able to continue to pursue that passion. And we hear so often that Thon and being in the involvement of being a student volunteer is something that is Penn State students' favorite memories. And as Maddie said, that's not something that has to end. It will just can take new forms. And we encourage you to get involved, whether that be through DMAG or through a local alumni chapter event. There are so many ways um, if you seek and even reach out to us and we'd be happy to connect you. But really getting involved with DMAG is a great way to get connected with Thon and Penn State alumni in your area and really wherever you are in the world. So mentioned earlier, Hope from Coast to Coast, this is our annual fundraising initiative that was established in 2016 as a virtual run and walk event. And as you can see, in five years, we've raised over $80,000. Um, all Hope from Coast to Coast donations go directly towards Thon's total. And this initiative encourages individual alumni, chapters, groups to raise funds to continue the fight against childhood cancer. And that is done through various different options. You can choose to pledge a certain number of miles. You can participate. This past year, we initiated a 46-day fitness challenge to do something active for 46 minutes of the 46 days leading up to Thon Weekend. You can host an event for others to come. You can plan a group run. Um, whatever it might be, it's a way to be active, to show support and to build awareness with your network and the community in your area to raise money for THON. And this past, thus far, it has been an entirely virtual initiative, but we hope to this year um, adopt an in-person race, fingers crossed, and, we, and, and have both options so that there would be an in-person race and a virtual option for more alumni and friends to be able to participate. Last year, just so you know, in terms of timing, we kicked off after the Thon 5K in October, and it led and ends um, the Saturday of Thon Weekend. So it's a way to get your energy, excitement, and fitness regimen ready for Thon Weekend. So we would love for you to follow us on social media. It's really a great way to stay engaged and informed of what's going on with DMAG, with Thon, with Four Diamonds. We work um, to, to shed light on those stories and on the events that are happening in this community. So that's a very easy way to stay involved and to hear about what's happening. 
And if you have an event going on, um, tag us or DM us and we will get, we will shine a light on that. Um, and with that, you know, just, you know, you can visit our website, dmaig.org or shoot us an email. Um, and we'll be happy to answer any of your questions. And we hope you will. Uh, you know, we, we really hope that folks get involved um, as alumni. And with that, um, we are gonna kick it over to Leanna from the Four Diamonds. Hi everyone. Thanks so much, Maddie and Haley. It's great to be here. I am really excited to share with you a little bit about what Four Diamonds is up to. So let me just share my screen. All right, wonderful. So my name is Leanna Hilbert and I am on staff here at Four Diamonds and I'm delighted to be here to tell you a little bit about what we have going on. So Four Diamonds has taken advantage of these unprecedented times to come up with a brand new fundraising program that will allow us to re-engage those alumni of THON as well as our K through 12 mini-thon program and any Four Diamonds families looking for a way to give back. And so we have created a brand new fundraising program called Play for the Kids. So when you think about being a, a child, you think about back to your childhood, if you take just a moment and kind of harken back to when you were a kid and what were the things that really defined your childhood? Do you remember what it was like to be a kid? You can pop some things into the chat if um, you think right away of what sort of um, kept you busy and kept childhood so much fun for you. Maybe it was riding your bike or swimming or playing kickball or maybe even just the taste of a hot fudge sundae. So many of these little moments are things that really described our childhood. And we know though that kids that are fighting cancer often miss out on those same fun activities that you and I just sort of remembered um, right now. And so we know that we wanted to provide a way for um, our supporters to honor those kids by having an, a, a fun day of doing something fun uh, that would honor those kids while they are unable to do those events. So Play for the Kids is that brand new fundraising program that will give our supporters, our THON alum, our mini THON alum, and our Four Diamonds families all over, wherever you are nationwide, of any age, to give them an opportunity to celebrate those kids. Play for the Kids is a program that's all about celebrating children's joy and how kids have that magical way of finding delight in everything that they do. So during the month of September, which is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, Four Diamonds supporters will play like kids and raise funds to benefit Four Diamonds. By joining the Play for the Kids community, you're making a commitment to our mission of conquering childhood cancer and giving hope to children and families everywhere. Your laughter will mean that someday kids won't miss out on those activities due to childhood cancer. Our first order of business uh, when we were creating this program was to build a volunteer committee of highly passionate, highly energetic people that would support us building a program from scratch. So we have a really nice mix of THON alum, mini THON alum, and Four Diamonds families that have helped us to create this program and have been pivotal in making it what it is today and will be super helpful as we create outreach for the people that will be um, you know, uh, recruited to be team captains and participants. Our volunteer committee will play a big role in getting Play for the Kids off the ground. So this program will launch this summer. We will soft launch the end of June. We will have the website go live and it will be available. And we are reaching out to those that are especially close to Four Diamonds, past supporters, people that know and love THON and Mini THON, as well as Four Diamonds families. We will have a number of kickoff rallies that you can take part in to tell you a little bit more about the program and answer any questions that you have. Initially, we have two kickoff rallies that will happen next week. One on Tuesday, June 22nd at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. 
and one at on June 24th, which is Thursday at noontime Eastern time. They will both be Zoom virtual and have the ability to hear a little bit more about what we have going on, how to get involved, and just a little bit more about Four Diamonds and Play for the Kids. We'll do a public launch mid-July so that anyone and anywhere can join and be able to register for Play for the Kids. And we will have all of our really fun Play for the Kids events taking place within the month of September in honor of Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. We'll wrap things up in October with a fun celebration at the beginning of October where we can celebrate the corporate partners, top fundraisers and teams, grateful families, volunteers, and just being able to celebrate our overall program success. So how to play like a kid. We knew that that was a pretty ambiguous thing to imagine. Maybe you already have your idea of how you'd like to celebrate and what event you'd like to hold, but we did create four fundraising activities to better define and give a little bit of an idea of how to get involved with Play for the Kids. Our four activities are move your body, eat like a kid, fun and games, and play your way. The first bucket is move your body. We know that many kids undergoing treatment don't have the opportunity to be able to be outside and doing physical fitness that kids, the things that kids love to do so much or moving their body. So move your body is a great way for you to get involved if you'd like to commit by doing something physically active. Maybe you say for the month of September, I'm going to just ride my bike every day or I'm going to shoot a hundred free throws. Um, you know, every week in the month of September. You can commit to a certain physical fitness activity, put that out on your social media, tie fundraising to it, and you will be part of Play for the Kids. So there's a lot of different ways to move your body, jump rope, jumping jacks, all those fun things. So that is the first bucket of activities. The second bucket is eat like a kid. We know that many kids undergoing treatment their diets are severely impacted and not, are not able to eat their favorite foods. This is an opportunity for you to eat your favorite foods with your favorite friends in honor of those kids who can't right now. So some ideas are you maybe have a, um, when we were young, if we did really well in school, had good grades or great behavior, um, my mom would do breakfast for dinner. So pancakes for dinner is a fun way to gather people that you know and love in your home and have a nice dinner of pancakes for dinner um, and charge a donation. So that's a great way to incorporate your favorite thing to do when you were young with food. You can also do some fun food challenges. Maybe you can say, I don't really eat spicy food, but I'll eat spicy wings if I fundraise a certain amount. Um, Cicadas are really big and popular this time. Um, there's a lot going on with cicadas. Maybe you do, uh, I'll eat a chocolate covered cicada if I fundraise $500 in the month of September and you live stream that via you know, uh, social media, those kinds of things. A lot of great ways to tie food in with fundraising. I wish I could say that you have the metabolism of a kid if you participate in this uh, fundraising activity, but it's for the kids, so you never know. Maybe that'll be the case. The third bucket is fun and games. This is a really nice bucket, nice and large that encompasses so many great things because we know that our Four Diamonds kiddos love just being kids, playing games, listening to music, dancing, having fun. So you can join your friends and family and create a silly challenge. When is the last time you've actually just let loose and jumped in muddy puddles? You can say, when I fundraise a certain amount, I'm going to film myself jumping in muddy puddles. It's a great, easy way to participate in a fundraiser. You can tie other things to it, uh, you know, dyeing your hair, shaving your hair, waxing your legs um, on social media, all of those great things. Or you can reenact your favorite TikTok dance and post that. That can be a really fun way to play for the play and fun and games for the kids. You can also just invite everybody that you know and love and participate in a fun kickball tournament or have a field day where you kick it back old school and do the three-legged race and tug of war and water balloons. Those things that you just haven't done in forever and you'll be doing those things from your childhood and also supporting a really great cause. 
And the fourth bucket is for those that just won't conform to one of the first three buckets. And you just have a fun, crazy, do-it-yourself idea that doesn't fit into one of the prior buckets, you can play your way. One of our volunteer committee members was really active in Cub Scouts when he was little and loved the Pinewood Derby. And so he was obsessed with it. And he even quit Scouts when it went from Cub Scouts to Boy Scouts because they no longer did the Pinewood Derby. Well, his play for the kids activity is to reenact the, the Pinewood Derby. So you can certainly take anything within your creative, that your creative juices come up with and put it into the play your way activity. As a fun incentive, we are offering um, 100, any participant who fundraises a minimum of $100 will receive a free Play for the Kids t-shirt. So we're really excited and hopeful that that will kind of move the needle in fundraising and have people really get excited about doing good and raising dollars. And one thing that makes our program really different from the other programs that Fort Diamonds has is for the first time ever, we're going to be able to offer participants who fundraise for us the ability to choose where their dollars go. So their dollars will flow directly to Four Diamonds or they can have the option to have it flow through FON and be a part of FON 2022's fundraising number that they hold up at the Bryce Jordan Center at the end of FON weekend. So we know that there are supporters that are, you know, have very strong ties to THON, and they will be able to play a part in this next year's THON, and um, we're really excited to allow that opportunity, and we're really excited that at Four Diamonds, we are able to be a part um, and help back the organization that has helped us so tremendously over the years. My contact information is on the screen. Um, my colleague Katie Anderson and I have been putting this program together. We'd love to hear any questions you have. If you'd like to be a part of the rallies or get involved in any way and be a part of Play for the Kids, we would love to talk you through that. So don't hesitate to reach out. We'll also be working with uh, corporate sponsors and businesses that want to support us. I'm pleased to say that we um, can announce our presenting sponsor is MI Windows and Doors, who has been a wonderful supporter of Four Diamonds over the years. They are our large presenting sponsor, and we'll be looking for other sponsors to support us with Play for the Kids. And it's also a great way for your organization or your company to do an employee engagement event. Um, this is a time that a lot of businesses are switching from remote work to return to work, and that can be a little bit of a bitter pill for some to swallow. So why not have a Play for the Kids event day and have fun with all of the employees? Uh, the employer can match donations. You can make it really fun and ease that back to work transition a little bit uh, and make it maybe not so, not such a big uh, the ask to return to work. So I will stop sharing my screen. And I know that we want you to invite all of the presenters back on because we'd love to hear any questions that you have that we can answer while we're all gathered here today. Thank you for your time. I would just like to say, I'm very excited to eat like a kid. <laughs> no cicadas? No, no, no. They're big, where I'm in New Jersey, they're very big here. I'm out, I'm, I'm over it. You're out. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> uh, Kate, do we have any any questions we can answer here? I don't believe we have had any ones that have gone unanswered. Okay. Um, but we've had a lot of great chatter in the um, in the chat with people sharing their thought experience. Um, so it's been really great to see. So thank you all for tuning in. Great. Yeah, I, I I mean I think I just want to. Uh, Again, thank everybody for for joining. This was really fun, um, and uh, uh, you know, I think you guys all got our contact information from our five thousand slides. But um, please do reach out to to any and all of us for any questions. You know, um, we all want everybody to get involved and stay involved in the fight against childhood cancer. Um, so please, please do FTK. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thank Thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. <laughs>